Hi there, my name is Dave Blake from EGD and in this video we're going to be talking about the programming and diagnostics of the NICE MC800 230 volt gate automation control panel. In this section of the video we're going to be discussing the inputs and outputs, what they are and their properties. Okay, so going from left to right with these inputs, uh, we've got the mains going in, so live neutral earth. Uh, we've got a second earth, earth block on there as well for your mo earth your motors. Uh, we've got a mains output for your flashing lamp, and then you've got your motor one and motor two terminal connections. Note these have been completely separated from the low voltage side of things. So you've got your incoming um, mains, mains terminals and your incoming for your motor connections, and anything live will go on this side. Um, then we've got the uh, outputs and inputs. So first two of which will be your electric strike lock, so terminals one and two there. So that will send a momentary pulse out to an electric lock uh, that's, uh, that's on your gate. Um, then you've got uh, terminals three and four, which is your negative, so zero volt for negative, and then your 24 volt positive on terminal four. But terminal four does double up as the common as well for some of your other contacts, which I'll come to in a sec. Uh, then we've got terminal five, which is your uh, uh, courtesy lamp output, and then six and seven, which is your blue bus input for your photocells, keypads, and other blue bus devices. Moving on to the next terminal block here, you can see we've got auxiliary inputs here, aux one, aux two, aux three, aux four, and these are for, um, the, by default, this panel is set up to have them set to as limit, switch, limit switches. However, you can set these up so that they monitor relay photocells, and I'll come to that when we come to the programming. The next input is for your stop input. Now the stop input is a, uh, an input that can monitor three types. So you can monitor normally open, normally closed, and 8.2K ohm resistance. It can actually monitor twice that load of resistance at 4.1K ohms. So what that means is that you can parallel two end of line safety edges into the one input across the stop and the common. And then finally, we've got 13, 14, and 15, which is your SBS, which is step-by-step, step, which can open, stop, and close from the same input. Then you've got open, which is your open command input, which can open, stop, then re and open again. And then your close input, uh, which is rarely used because there's not that often that you want to send a, just a close-only close, close only command, but that does close, stop, close. So those are the main inputs and outputs of this panel. Um, you may see there are some other inputs as well. For instance, this uh, uh, is the antenna input. So if you want to fit this into a steel cabinet and you want to extend the range on your transmitters, uh, you can hardwire a, a 433 megahertz tuned antenna back to this position here. Um, you'll also see a, a, port, a couple of ports on here. Uh, which is one labelled the IBT4N, that's for your OVU and uh, other compatible devices. And uh, then this one in the centre here is for your radio receiver, which again we'll come on to shortly after. So in a nutshell, that is the full spectrum of the MC MC800 with their inputs and outputs. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to program your remote controls into the OxyBD radio receiver. Okay, so we take our radio receiver um, out of the box and we plug it into the top there. Now that you should hardwire your little stubby antenna into this piece here, but because I'm using it at short range and for demonstrative purposes only, I'm going to leave that bit out at the moment. And uh, once that's plugged in, you want to take your remote control that's supplied in the kit. And uh, there, uh, you'll see there's two channels on here and there are two modes to the way that you can program this remote control into this receiver. You can either automatically assign both channel one and channel two, where it will assign channel one to be step-by-step step and channel two to be pedestrian. Or if you've got a, uh, a double set of gates, uh, let's say a horseshoe driveway, and you need to assign channel one for one pair of gates and channel two for another pair of gates, then we need to program it in a different method. I'm gonna show you both, but let's show you the first method first would be pressing and holding the learn button down and keeping it held down until that green LED on the top goes solid. Then let go. Whilst that's solid, you press any button on the remote control until you get 
three flashing lights on this green LED here. Now, once you get those three LEDs, it'll go back to being solid, and eventually it will time out, usually after about 10 seconds or so. The second method would be to, like I say, program each channel individually. And what that consists of is just pressing the Learn button on here just once and release. The LED will start flashing once a second. Whilst that's flashing, press and hold the channel on the remote control you want to learn in until you get three long flashes or prolonged flashes. Once you've got those, it'll go back to flashing once every second or so. And then eventually it will time out again after 10 seconds. Now what that means is now I've programmed the top button to open the gates in a step-by-step -step mode. The bottom button is free to program into any other device that you want it to be. So a garage door or another gate system. Um, so that when you're in close proximity, if it's close proximity, you're not operating two things at once. In this section, we're going to be talking about the diagnostics on the MC800. This refers to the LEDs that are on there and how you can determine whether there's a fault present or not. Okay, going from left to right on this control panel, you've got the blue bus LED, which typically should be flashing green once every second or so. If that's not doing that, and if there's a, a quick series of red flashes in fairly quick succession, that's the board telling you there's a fault present. This could be some of the more common ones you might see, such as the two flash fault, which is in reference to photocells. So if you've got two flashes, two quick flashes, then a pause, then the fault is gonna be with something to do with the photocells. Let's send my gates to the closed position and mimic that with photocells being interrupted. What you should see is a two flash fault and then a pause two flashes, then a pause. And that's telling me those two flashes uh, has been, has been a, an activation by the photocells. Um, that will clear on the next operation. So if I sent this gate a close command again, uh, you should see the LED go back to be flashing once every second. But there are all other diagnostics for this LED as well. So such as three flashes and a pause, that references the inherent obstacle detection. Four flashes and a pause is the stop input. And then you've got the dreaded seven flash fault, which is when there's a serious malfunction on the control panel. Sometimes this can come up and it can just be easily cleared by sending another command. But if it's not, then you may need to factory reset the control board. The other LEDs on this control panel reference other things, such as the auxiliary inputs. Now the auxiliary inputs by default are set to be a limit switch input. However, you can change these via the button above to set them to be a photocell input. Again, the LEDs just above those inputs there should be on if there's a normally closed signal present, which is basically what your photocells should be offering. So you'll see if there's a, uh, a closed contact wired across here, it'll be represented by a red LED just above. So if I was to cover my photocells there, you'd see that go open circuit and the LED will turn off. So that's how you can tell what you've got, that you've got a closed circuit back to the control panel. So if you suspect that the photocells are playing up, um, again, for one of the first places, as well as your uh, blue bus LED, will be to have a look at above the aux inputs here, just to make sure that they are showing closed contacts where they should be. Moving along, then you've got this stop input LED, which again, that should be permanently lit. When you do a search for connected devices, this will illuminate depending on the state of the wiring that you've wired in there at the time. This input can monitor normally open, normally closed, or 8.2 K ohm resistance. If that input was to ever change state, for instance, going closed circuit to open, then the LED above it will turn off, and then you'll end up with a four flash fault on your blue bus LED. So that LED, the stop LED, should be permanently lit. And the last three LEDs on this board reference the command inputs. So you'll have SBS, open, and close. SBS is referencing the step-by-step -step command input. Open is the open input, which will open, stop, open. And close is, as it sounds, close, stop, close. Uh, now those three inputs should be normally open contacts wired across there. And likewise with the other LEDs across that row, uh, they will indicate when there's a closed signal present. So if your gates are stuck open for whatever reason and uh, your open LED is lit, 
then you know that you need to go back to your command devices and have a look at why there's a closed circuit present. In this section, we're going to be talking about how to program the auto close setting. So at this stage, we want to, uh, you might want to access the uh, standard parameters or the first level of parameters uh, to change some of the settings, such as the auto close function. Um, to get into the first level of parameters, you need to press and hold down this stop set button until the L1 LED starts to flash. Now, when that starts flashing, L1 through L8, they all have different functions that you can change. L1 being the one for auto close. So if I press and hold that down, the stop set for around about five seconds until L1 starts flashing, then let go. You'll notice that's a quick flash at the moment. If I press stop set again, you'll have a longer flash. And that means you've just toggled it from semi-automatic to automatic. When that times out, L1 LED, that should stay on, and that will indicate that the, uh, the auto close mode is now active. So when I send this a, a, a command to open, its default time setting is about 30 seconds. So it will count down from 30 seconds and then the gates will automatically close. In this section, we're going to be talking about the learning of the devices for the stop input, blue bus input and auxiliary inputs. So at this point, we're now ready to start registering devices with the control panel. Um, but before we do so, um, because we've got our relay photocells wired across the auxiliary input here and the panel is default set to a limit switch input, we need to set the panel so it's recognizing this as a photocell input. So you'll see above here, we've got a button which is labeled photo PRG. We need to press and hold this down Keep it held down until the LED above it, LP, lights up, then let go. Now we're ready to start registering the devices. Um, before I do that, I just want to explain what devices it's going to register with. So obviously we've got our relay photocells in here into AUX1 and the common, but what it will also register is whatever's into stop and the common. Now the stop input will monitor normally open, normally closed, or 8.2K, as you know. So whatever state is wired in that input at that time it will then monitor from here on out. And, and then any changes to that state will stop the gates. Um, the other input it will register is uh, across six and seven, which is uh, for Bluebus devices. So you could have uh, Bluebus photocells, uh, Bluebus keypad, any, any Bluebus device that NICE have manufactured, basically. Uh, they can all be wired in parallel straight back to these two terminals here. So now we've kind of explained that, next step would be to program the uh, devices themselves. So what we want to do is open and stop set. We want to press them two down simultaneously until L1 and L2 start flashing quicker and then let go. Shortly after we'll see that switch to L3 and L4 and what that is now telling us is uh, the devices have been learned but now it's ready to do a, uh, a learn for the limits. Now you might see uh, on the left here, uh, the red LED flashing there. That will clear when I carry out the next maneuver, but typically once you've registered devices, that LED should flash green. Uh, so now we are ready to go on to the next stage and program the limits. So to set the limits on this, uh, this control panel, um, typically what we want to make sure is, is the gate is set in the midway position. Um, before we execute this. And the reason for that is, is so that you know that the direction that the motor is traveling in is the right way. Um, if the gate goes in the incorrect direction, then the logic of the photocells and the open input will all be reversed, basically. So when we set this, when we start setting the limits, the gate must go to the closed direction first. If it starts going to the open direction, power down the system, reverse the two live contacts, the two live phases here, swap them over, power back up, start the process again. Um, what we need to, like I say, make sure is that the gate starts running to the close direction first. And to do that, we simply press and hold, stop, set and close simultaneously until you hear a click on the board and the gates will start traveling to the close direction. Now I've got this set up in single mode at the moment You'll see the output for the power going at the top here. It recognizes nothing in motor one and it's starting to travel on motor two. Now, as with the 24 volt system as well, the 230 volt system, you must, if you've got a single operation, 
you must wire out of the motor two output. If you do, do not do that, then basically what, the gate, what will happen is the gate will come to the closed position and then it will not learn the open limits. By wiring out of motor two, the gate will slowly come to the closed position, it will slowly run all the way to the open position and then it will come back at its normal speed. You can see motor one is trying again, recognizes nothing connected and again motor one. And what we're looking for is when this is completed, L3 and L4 will go off and it will go back to its normal state. Like I say, you can see which, uh, which motor is in operation by these two LEDs up here. Um, you should see those LEDs on as the gates are in travel. We'll keep an eye on these two LEDs here and like I say, when that's completed, these LEDs will stay off and you shouldn't be left with anything on L1 through to L4 um, unless you've already set some of the standard parameters in which these are represented. And that is how we program the uh, limits in a basic mode on this panel. So that was a quick rundown on how you program the NICE MC800 control panel. Uh, there are a lot more parameters that can be programmed on this system and a lot more settings that can be adjusted. Uh, for more technical support on how to do this, please contact us on the details below. And for the latest in industry news and our latest offers, uh, please follow us on our social media.